Namaste and good evening to one and all. Welcome to Leaders Connect 360's episode LC0145. Leaders Connect 360 is CSR initiative by Bija Training and organized by the Mass Leadership. My name is Janani and I am pursuing my BCom Honors degree at SRM. Leaders Connect 360 is started with a specific objective of inviting 1000 plus leaders and create a million leaders. It is an online hub where every Wednesday from 6.30 p.m. to 17 p.m., we learn from top management leaders on Zoom Live. And once in quarter, in each city, we have an offline networking meet to network, support, and grow with the leaders. That's when we call it Leaders Create More Leaders. Currently, all are muted, and we will be giving you an opportunity to speak to our guest, Mr. Aro Raj, Dean, VKM Vidyalaya, CBSC School, and panel discussion leader, Mr. Tashmi Jaswal, founder, Research I. Before you are unmuted, let me share that we are currently live on LinkedIn, and this episode LC0145 is being recorded. First time visitors may click on the WhatsApp, FB, and LinkedIn link on the chat box to get updated by joining us in creating more leaders. All in the house are requested to turn on your videos, which will help in making the episode highly interactive. So, are we all ready to interact with our guest and panel discussion leader? Then share a thumbs up or smiley emoji in the chat box. Thank you. Before the introduction of the guest, let me also introduce Ms. Divya, corporate trainer and coach, who will interact with our guest along with the panel discussion leader, Ms. Rashmi Jeswar. I shall welcome you all. Over to you, Ms. Divya. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Janani, for the introduction. Uh, welcome all for today's episode. It is great seeing you all uh, of the beginning of the year. I think this is the first time again after the year I'm joining. It's lovely to see you all uh, with a fresh mind and a bright faces, especially uh, inviting Janani, um, Ra Rashmi Janani as, you know, uh, the panel discussion and everything has been a pleasure to meet you all today. Happy New Year. I know it's a little late, but however, Happy New Year to all. Today, it's going to be a little enlightening because today we're going to invite Arugya Raj of VKM uh, School. He's a dean. Uh, the insights of a leader being an educa in an education system is going to be very, very popular. So I think that's the base for all of us as trainers. So let's uh, see what Arugya Raj has in the table for us. Uh, I also welcome R Rashmi again for being our panel discussion leader. She's brilliant. And being an author, I think she's got so much of an insight every day when I meet her, every minute I see her. Uh, so lovely to uh, visit you all and listen to all your insights today. Great. So we have, we're going to start with an introduction video for both of us being our chief guest as well as for a panel discussion. So I request Arul to play the video for all of us and then begin, begin the session.
thank you all very much for the wonderful video. Um, I should say that I'm a little astonished by Mr. Arogya Raj being established so many things. I wonder where does he keep all the awards and the certificates which he's done for his uh, life. Um, VK Vidyala is one of the well-known uh, uh, school, if I can say it. Honestly, uh, CBSC was one of the dream come true for us when we were studying. All my parents were only looking at state boards and matriculation. CBSC has been a dream. So you win, Arugya Raj sir, that you know established so much about the school and the syllabus. It's great to know you today. So I am just I cannot wait. What are the insights you wanna give us, which will help me in my everyday life? And talking about Rashmi, I think everybody of us know how insightful she is. She is a great author, and the points and the the power of uh, energy she comes within it's just spreading like a you know water and a wind here. So appreciate both of you, and it is a great um, um, you know introduction video as well as what uh, Arul has done. So let me give you a gist of what we are going to do uh, in the session today. After the panel discussion, we'll be having a small quiz which Rashmi will be conducting for all our members today, and then later which we will have a summary, and then we'll also have a word of thanks for all our uh, members and the honor. So this is how the session is uh, been uh, uh, climbed up to. So. I'll leave it to you all, especially Rashmi. The floor is you, the mic is yours. Please have fun and let me know if this, there is anything which you want me to include my points there. I will always be here to include my points. However, please uh, show your light and uh, throw the limelight of the you know interesting facts which you all can discuss today. I'm awaiting to see the interesting thoughts here. Over to you, ma'am. Oh, uh, thank you, Divya. Thanks a lot. That was a very nice uh, opening to a very interesting topic. Uh, and thank you for the video. It was a lovely video. And it's an honor to have you, Mr. Aroki Araj. Uh, today, uh, we're going to discuss about uh, emotional health, emotional wellness, which is such a uh, vital part of our health. We all talk about our, our physical health, but we fail to talk about emotional health. Uh, if we have a headache, we immediately say, oh, I've got a headache. But if we, if we are feeling a bit low, then we don't want to accept it to anybody that we are feeling a bit low. And we need that time for ourselves to, you know, recoup, uh, to, you know, uh, feel refreshed and come back to our original self. We are not giving ourselves that time. Uh, so thank you, sir, for being on our show today. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Reshmi, and uh, the entire team of Leaders Connect. I must uh, really thank Mr. Prakash, the Mask Leadership Program founder and, uh, you know, the uh, the mentor of uh, Mask Leadership. And thank you, Mr. Arul, for the lovely uh, presentation video. Even I was really wild to see that on screen. And uh, thank you, Divya, for the lovely introduction. And uh, I, I feel that, you know, today's uh, topic, Leaders Connect. So as rightly mentioned by Reshmi, we all deal with the emotional balances. So this topic is very relevant across the industry. Today, leaders are connected uh, in this uh, meeting. And uh, I would feel, uh, see, whether we are mentors, teachers, or entrepreneurs, or uh, doing any business, or we are into the any industrial field, I think we all deal with human emotions. So basically, we deal with uh, people's feelings. So that is really very vital to share some few uh, insights that I have encountered and experienced uh, during uh, my journey in my career so thank you for that and uh, uh, you know mental wellness is being a, a very important uh, topic that all leaders are concerned about despite uh, various industries as he said you know the more progressive the success rate of an industry it uh, you know totally depends on how well or how well the leader connects the well-being of all the staff or the employees in an industry because that matters about their consistent progressive success rate that is happening in any industry, right? Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's really an honor to have you on our show. Uh, let's begin. I start with my first question. How can we bring about a better understanding about our emotional health and mental health issues in the communities and the workplaces that we are there in? Yeah, like the first essential aspect uh, being an employer and to the employees, understanding their roles in a workplace. So that's what I generally feel. Because at times when uh, employees are at aloof in a place, 
where they are not understanding their uh, self responsibilities and role play uh, there is a lot of uh, you know mental pressure and agony that is happening uh, uh, amidst them so understanding the role call would be the ideal and uh, very important thing that every workplace must uh, interest with and uh, you know when you talk about uh, the community wellness and thing i think uh, it should be oriented so orientation should be given to all the employees annually to understand uh, their goal and motive the objective of their presence in the workplace because the moment they take that uh, ownership of uh, understanding their role call based on the situation happening in the workplace i think uh, their uh, you know uh, their output would be very very effective and their contribution would be very relevant and justified so every employee must be given a uh, you know orientation uh, and workshops to be conducted to engage them you know in a community where they tend to understand the strength of each uh, you know peer colleagues and that's how the progressive success rate comes up so uh, that's a great insight about how uh, we can you know foster the understanding of mental and emotional uh, health uh, in workplaces what about community sir i mean we have a lot of communities that we are uh, a part of we are a part of a society and indian society is very distinct so uh, how can uh, we foster the understanding of emotional wellness in our society as well to add on to rashmi's question i would also include the workplace because right now what is mandatory what i'm seeing as a trainer is a lot of um, um behavioral and mental wealth programs culture changing programs and there are a lot of people oriented emotional based sort of a you know environment which has been uh, changing nowadays so in that way you can just throw the limelight on communities as well as workplace would be nice yes agree yeah true see like uh, you know uh, community plays a very important role see exchange of ideas and uh, you know interpersonal skill of uh, every uh, uh, work persons uh, inside an industry or an office setup it uh, really brings down lots of input about uh, their uh, understanding of dealing with emotions so you know mental wellness is it totally depends on individual's choice the uh, intrinsic motivation of an individual brings to take up the extrinsic motivation that is happening around in a community see however the person is employee is very stubborn into take into an inspiration i don't think the changes will definitely bloom into things so what naturally the community should uh, you know foster good changes is a welcome attitude and uh, being empathizing with uh, all the community members in every place and giving them the right choice to be a part and you know uh, you know a well giving them you know making them responsible uh, you know definitely would do a lot of good things in the community. thank you so for the great insight uh, i go to the second question what initiatives can be implemented in the society to reduce the stigma associated with mental health there is a lot of uh, mental barrier there is no acceptance about mental health or emotional well being uh, when we uh, approach mental health issues there is a lot of stigma that is attached to it we don't want to accept that we are suffering from something uh and when will this really uh, when are we uh, of course now the awareness is increased but how can we do away with the stigma at present yeah basically i would say this you know when we should come out of this stigma but to make them understand you see when employees go wrong when they have an understanding of their uh, you know designations no matter a ceo of a company or a head teacher of a school or a kindergarten teacher that doesn't make a you know vast difference everybody plays their own role in particular segment and where their uh, you know their contribution is very much essential when we talk about a senior uh, employee in an office having worked with experience uh, could uh, definitely could not be a match with the uh, freshers but of course when you talk about the mental wellness the participation of each employee in other aspects of the company policy should come around and you know it should stay and that's how we can come out of that stigma because generally you know when people deal with this uh, uh, you know mental wellness stigma you know people uh, uh, being spoken harsh words or you know that their, their treatment uh, that they give it to each uh, a person's present in a workplace and culture that makes uh, this uh, you know uh, individual person to suffer a lot and get it harassed so uh, basically people should see for example when we deal with uh, 
patient of cancer and you know in any other patient we have different approaches being uh, uh, an expert so people should try, start to understand that as we deal with uh, the physical illness so shall we deal with the mental you know uh, trauma that an individual is uh, taking so such care should be you know given by each one of us the contribution should be what do you say the i mean uh, we all uh, agree that you know we are uh like a cancer patient is taken care by cancer specialist so there is a specialist for your emotional wellness also don't you think devya yeah i mean it certainly yeah. is important i guess um, i'm sorry sir i'm just uh, yeah, trying to sorry. you know uh, uh, think aloud here uh, mental wellness is important however the acceptance towards the mental health or what i am going through call it healing call it some sort of an acceptance or realization people don't have a certain awareness towards that i think as society we all have some sort of a um, you know a responsibility to showcase it saying that you know some there are few people who are going through trauma trauma is becoming a very famous word nowadays and we all need to really understand as a community and a society that few people do really struggle to go through the acceptance and the realization and i think that is what sir is trying to say a lot of people need that acceptance Yeah, thank you, so uh, thank, you uh, thank you for that compliment uh, uh, you know statements like i would love to add on one more thing see the moment when we talk about workplace business we you know we think out of the box see for example we have we are, we all hail from a family and you know uh, we play different roles in family we would we don't deal with all the same like to your kid you are very different completely see there you see you have an emotional balance you have yeah. to use your you know at, you know your uh, your quotient very well especially your adversity quotient like uh, you know uh, critical thinking and the problem solving uh, a kid of a two you know when he cries for a candy you can't deal with uh, you know strategies that you use to deal with an adult naturally so so what I, that is what every human uh, person every employee should carry in a workplace too. that's what i'm trying to say like see they all should think that everybody comes uh, to work together so when they have the empathy and uh, towards uh, every one of them and i think uh, uh, the work culture and the environment would be very great see the employee is not going to settle down for a good prospects of making monetary benefits from an institution or organization unless he is like to come to the office every day with that mental wellness that is happening at him so naturally it is concerned about every individual it's like you know a boomerang comes to you what you sow is so social you take it back so everyone should think about uh, uh, giving uh, when space for everybody working despite so, that um, he raised a wonderful question mr rajiv that he's asked how is the sigma reduced right from the school itself because see um when i was studying and probably people who belong to my age say the same thing in my school numbers are the most biggest deal okay so we need to gain 90 percentage and above for you to excel in certain subjects but now it's totally changing and now um, uh, how i went through that i don't know it just happened i mean i passed 10 standard it's a great deal then when my mom told me like you know what it's just 10 standard you have another graduation thing to do like what i have some more things to do so those were traumatic for us okay when in our schooling but right now children are very simple very logical and the questions are very very intrusive right so they ask why why should i get this number why should i get this you know answer like this is very um i think we evolving so in that way how do you think we can reduce it in the school level sir i i think one simple answer is uh, the digital uh, platform right now we see when when we talk about usually people are categorized into urban hailing in a hub urban area and rural area and a remote area i don't think nowadays this is no more a concern to anybody who deals with it because all of us are connected through this window we all come under that one roof digital platform a student uh, you know uh, hailing in a remote area they have got access to this uh, social media and digital platform everybody who watch, children watches youtube these days as you rightly said they are very uh, very they very in the comfort zone they are not uh, that uh, bothered about the pressures that they are handling and the wellness Uh, you know despite uh, the indifferences that they feel in in terms of their stature and physical uh, you know physic see earlier there used to be a lot of uh, this traumatic stigma happening in a classroom uh, you know uh, indifferences being seen in a racial differences and uh, their physical appearances 
but i don't think children are more, uh, they welcome everybody today in a classroom so they come out with wonderful ideas as you rightly mentioned so it's all about collaboration that's what i feel see earlier they had a different stigma that uh, based on the region geographical indifferences and all that cultural indifferences but i think uh, today students are global students everybody got connected to the windows and uh, they keep collaborating on different platforms skill education and not only in education they have uh, more uh, connection to this course scholastic activities so that's being wonderful i think uh, very slowly i would definitely see that this uh, disparity wouldn't happen in a very uh, short future oh, that's lovely that's, oh, that's lovely. a wonderful and a positive view i think uh, I yeah, mean, yeah you gave you gave such a since you've been in schools you know and you've been with students you have you have a much better understanding of how the present generation is and how they're looking at each other and how they're perceiving each other's differences and diversity i think so you've given the most positive view <laughs> yeah. so there, is I could a there is a question in the chat box i could see uh, does yeah. this mean that children all deal with their problems there is a question raised by a participant i think it. it's better we ask rajiv because um, it's always yeah. good to check with him what is that he would willing to know from the question so i'd like rajiv to ask that question uh, to our guest about it. Uh, just I just wanted to hold on. Can we have the questions at the yes, end? Yes, we can. We can. We can do uh, that because uh, uh, let us just go with the flow, and then yeah. at the end we can have a Q and A. Lovely. Sure. So we'll uh, save the question for the open question forum when it is happening. Yes. That's yeah. yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely. So I go to the third question. In times of stress and adversity, what are the effective coping mechanisms can like individuals can uh, like me can have? You know, and so that we can maintain our emotional balance and emotional wellness. i think to this question i personally answer you as an individual because everybody deals with pressure and stress see these days when you talk about uh, uh, you know work uh, handling everybody comes out with the term called you know i'm being very stressed uh, you know you know whatever the emotions they take into but i think uh, the best way to cope up with the resilience is you know to uh, have a self confidence and concentrate on self discipline i uh, you can engage in some uh, Uh, you know good uh, healthy habits like uh, yoga and exercising and physical uh, you know uh, exercising would definitely make a person to feel a little self confident and he can deviate from the pressures that he is handling and undergoing and uh, as i told you about this adversity you see it is everybody can come out with lot of ideas and strategies but at the end of the day again i tell you this is an individual deals with the problem so there can be mentors and counselors advising uh, to cope with the mental pressures but there are n means and ways uh, to practice as well but uh, the best way is uh, to follow some basic uh, things recently i think i went through an article by a japanese mentor called he said about shield a coining a word called a shield for an acronym he said s h i e l d he said yes for sleep have a good sleep H for handling emotions. I for interactions. Every day we need to interact with people. You know, find some people to interact with. E for exercising, and L for learning new things. Every day, but let us learn something. Let us learn techno. Whatever we don't, know, let's learn like music or you know language or uh, technology. He said, I am very seventy four year old. I am learning technology to make videos and creative things. And you know, and uh, D for diet. The food that we take. The best way. is to have a healthy food and good exercise and sleep i think uh, uh, we can you know break that resilience in us and we'll gain some self confidence to face this uh, you know stress management oh uh, senthil is asking for h h is handling emotions effectively handling emotions yes yes yeah. okay. uh we go to the fourth question how can we increase education and awareness about mental health issues in schools workplaces and public spaces at uh, this is a lot of uh, programs and uh, you know we when we talk about uh, cbsc today cbsc comes out with school health and wellness program so it is being piloted across schools through ma ma master trainers and they give priority to uh, the school wealth and uh, there is a manual uh, for uh, teachers and mentors to take it across to the classrooms and uh, that is why today grading system across any board in india 
whether it is ICSC or CBSE or State Board Education, they all come out uh, with the grading system. The assessment is no more ranking. Even we can see with the uh, entrance examinations. So examination gives real uh, pressures, you know, when we talk about school, of course. So they come out with this grading uh, system, like a uh, percentile. This pool of students uh, come into this percentile, so they no more uh, see any indifferences that is practiced in schools. But of course, in workplace also, encouragement, uh, you know, identifying the right uh, persons and uh, allocating the works. As earlier I mentioned, see, a physician deals with sickness based on the severity of the sickness, the physician gives the dose of uh, medicines. That's how a leader in a workplace and an organization should do it. It doesn't mean that he's showing any disparity or he is seeing some indifferences or you know being partial. But an employee, an employer would know that the work uh, for enforcement would be done by a performer in a group. Team is always a team, but there is a key players in a team that everybody should understand and we should reach out to everyone. So this piloting of different workshop programs and in creating awareness, like mental uh, wellness is very much important uh, for everybody to give contributions and uh, you know to sail the, a ship in a very smooth way. So everyone should understand how unique that everyone should control emotions. So I here I would like to give you uh, some uh, four uh, uh, coining words to handle with adversity questions. This should be taught and everyone should be aware. Control, ownership, and uh, reach out, and endurance. This is, if everybody follows this, they will have their self-care, and I think uh, they can easily handle the adversity. Um, just to, you know, have a very curious question here. Um, you saying it is for leaders or it is even from the school atmosphere or it is it is going to work out only for the workplace scenarios because see I, I when you talk about endurance um i don't know how far the children would be able to cope up with that so could you please explain a little bit about it yeah sure see i i think this uh, you know uh, uh, mental wellness is a very common topic uh, it you know it's not only for the employees it is also for the students who you know who, who feel real peer pressures in school of course they have the school student uh, wellness coordinator to initiate there are certain children as we all know today they are very intelligent they were able to you know handle things and the first uh, thing a student takes it the peer advice more mm -hmm. than finding their own mentor and uh, spiritual director or guidance they go with the peer advice so that is why uh, this awareness should be uh, you know taught across all the uh, uh, students at the grassroots level. See, when we talk about endurance, we are not going to, uh, you know, initiate uh, that mental trauma of all the feelings that they are going to face it as an adult. Being a children in a, a school student, naturally, they every trauma takes with the, you know, uh, uh, proceeding of a fear in them. This is a phobia kind of a phobia. They, they they take it across and they whirl around. So, uh, how children should be taught? Basically, children all uh, face this fear because of uh, you know accepting failures they want to be they want to show that they are successful they feel the peer pressure of uh, their parents the school the uh, the peer friends you know that's how uh, they feel the pressure so and that uh, you see endurance is not uh, a big term to deal with the physically but it is a, it is a very good uh, you know emotional term that a child should you know come out of it he or she should be able to come out of this mental fear uh, that is endurance, but that consistency and perseverance. Children today, you know, they all go for opting uh, uh, to, to do something and they skip from one to the other. They don't have consistency and perseverance today. So that should be taught and that endurance every child or, you know, uh, any employee who works in a workplace should. I mean, they have to, I can apply this to an employee. Uh, employee should bounce back. Not, the leader is all, not always very smooth to their own employees, you know, based on the uh, different sectors. The, the pressures and the targets that they have, uh, the work, uh, you know, work pressure also increases. The degree goes, so every uh, employee should bounce back. That endurance, that consistency, everyone need to carry to handle mental mental wellness. Understood. Which was very clearly told. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah, thank you, sir. And I totally agree that failures have to be, uh, to be able to accept failure 
because today kids don't want to fail and instead of telling success stories i think so we should tell some failure stories of what i failed let me accept i failed and this is what i learned this is just so vital in today's life i feel where social media is filled with success stories <laughs> Now, there is this recent uh, thing which Google and Apple has uh, started using strategy fear not to fail because they want us to fail and then you know come up with a learning and certain amount of strategy. I think failure is one of such things which made great successful leaders among us. Yeah. Thank you Divya for the insight. So we come to the last and the fifth question. Uh, how can we prioritize self-care in our daily life? You know uh, what role does self-care play uh, in the wellness journey. I feel that wellness is a journey. It's not a destination. You know, sure. wellness, okay, khatam ho gaya. we travel so much, so we have been well. Tomorrow I can be emotionally unwell. So in this uh, wellness journey, uh, how important is self-care and what are the things that I can do to uh, engage in self-care? Self-care is, uh, as you rightly mentioned, uh, self care is very much essential uh, to come out of this mental uh, uh, to safeguard and uh, to retain this mental wellness so basically everyone should be very habituated to self grooming understanding and getting engaged with a lot of uh, you know uh, activities employee engagement when you talk about an organization uh, you know uh, when you uh, employee engagement makes it and uh, their uh, intrapersonal skills also develops when we really focus on the self care so, uh, you know, uh, uh, see, one should really feel to do their basic work, uh, to balance their personal life and the workplace. So for that, self-care is very much essential. Like, you know, uh, that gender bias and the stigma should also be broken. That stereotype of thinking should be broken. Like, uh, because, you know, really that days are gone, I believe, but still uh, here and there we can see the, you know, failure rates as well. So when you talk about, uh, you know, uh, gender bias, being gender bias, this work is done by a female or a male. You know, when you talk about this uh, bias being visible in our home culture as well and also in our workplace also. So that should come out of it and uh, people should be given a lot of, uh, you know, awareness about uh, handling pressures. So I think today there is something called a design thinking. When we talk about this uh, uh, self-awareness, Today, people all will come out with a lot of prototype ideas. Very few try to execute it well, but uh, there are many uh, who just bypass and daydream things and uh, they go off. So when you talk about design thinking, every human being, uh, their mental uh, stability is they cannot be very idle. They are, though, though physically they can be idle, but their thought process is something very unique. Every person thinks every uh, just of a minute. So that should be brought on in the da uh, daily life. And personally, it is all about, uh, uh, you know, when we talk about self-grooming, uh, we should definitely try to adopt to a traditional balance, like uh, try to incorporate some good values uh, that is being, uh, you know, uh, given by our ancestors. Like uh, when we talk about, see, today yoga is being accepted universally. And when many, even the developed nations, when you talk about uh, certain cultures of India or, or country, uh, there are people who start thinking against. They say that it is being imposed on us. But you see, the uh, yoga is universally accepted in many different forms. Uh, see, it can be a Tai Chi in uh, you know China and Japan. It can be an art form of yoga here, and uh, there are so different Surya Namaskars and chakras. So self care. When we talk about self care, let us learn uh, through our ancestors that good policy. See, today there are many developed corporate companies, organizations. They follow this case. Hmm. Japanese, uh, you know, they, it is like to encourage an employee, they, they practice this case method and there are a lot of good practices being carried across global. Right? So I think uh, it's, a, it's a personal belief that everyone should come out with and a good hobby to be taught. And today we can see a lot of recreational uh, halls being created in every office. We have uh, billiards, we have good pool of games there. Uh, to make them engage, they have an intercultural uh, competitions happening between uh, uh, companies uh, that we see, you know, to get them engaged in some good kind of a self care. So I think it do definitely a good thing uh, to carry out mental wellness. Yeah, I totally agree that yoga, uh, personally, it has worked very well with me, uh, especially pranayama and meditation. I think exactly. so having meditation 
calls across the country would really, really help uh, everybody in their emotional wealth and mental wellness journey. Uh, thank you so much for your insights. Divya, uh, would you like to uh, just uh, throw some light on what all we discussed? I think so. You're the best person to really summarize and put your own insight and your own uh, thought. I think we have a wonderful uh, member here to talk about the summary. However, uh, to talk about self-care, what I have very simple language, I'll tell you. So I've, okay, I don't know, maybe I'm personalizing this. I've grown in a childhood in a very timid uh, environment. You know, when I don't wear my dupatta and go, my mom says, what people will think if you don't wear dupatta and go? Like, why don't you just accommodate to the society? Now, for me, creating my nail art is a self-care. Putting a lipstick on and walking out is a self-care and it also boosts my self-confidence. So simple things like that, which everybody had to acknowledge saying that I like to do it because I really like me being in that way. Uh, considering yoga and meditation, that's the highest level of your mental wellness and mental health. That I think it starts from the base of just do what you like to do. Let's not complicate things in a different area and aspects. So once we start understanding that this is what I want, unless and until it doesn't hurt others, it's sorted is what I believe. And that's what I'm going and doing right now as, as a part of my self-care activities. Be very honest, morning, a cup of coffee with no disturbance for 10 minutes is a self-care, which I do for myself. Because uh, starting 8 o'clock morning to send children to school colleges is a very hectic activity. So getting that 10 minutes is a privilege and I made, I created that border telling everybody I need that 10 minutes and that is my self-care time. Leave me alone. <laughs> so I think that's where I would acknowledge to what you guys are talking about. That's very, very important for mental wellness as well. Thank you very much for both of you to put on that light and a lot of aspects which we um, tend to hear but not talk, uh, tend to acknowledge but not uh, you know implement in our uh, lives. It's great knowing a lot of things, how a school can change a leader to be a, a person who turn out to be a leader. So in that way, I think it's a wonderful conversation between Rashmi and uh, Arugya Raj. It's, it's lovely uh, seeing, interacting you. I learned something new about SHIELD and the four words which you were telling me, sir, control, um, ownership, reach out and endurance. I think I'm going to implement that in my training, which will help a lot of the people when I uh, meet them. So thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Thank I, you I think to add on, Thanks a lot. Yeah. yeah. To add on one thing, uh, that last point that you were talking about, uh, about self-care, you know, uh, what would uh, be the other people think about us? That's the right thing. I think it is very relevant and valid. Here, I would like to add on to this. Uh, you know, today there are very less, uh, uh, you know, uh, constructive criticism happening at all. That's the main yeah. problem. People are worried because we are being criticized. And yes. that's how the self-care and grooming goes. And very beautiful example. See, yoga is the highest form of thinking about self-care, but you know, nail art and something very which very fundamental, which you like every day, that will really boost the motivational uh, attitude towards a person and that will bring about self-care. Thanks for adding that. Really, I love that point. I would want to tell you that. And thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thanks. Thank you for and saying today that. I've, yeah, 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 maybe, yeah. Go ahead, Rashmi. Yeah, yeah. Today's Valentine's Day, I think so. To love yourself is, uh, and you, you, are, you are your own Valentine. So, I mean, if you can't love yourself, it's very, very difficult to really uh, keep that emotion uh, going with somebody else. Your emotional tank yourself should be full, you know. Full and so that to yeah. be able to love somebody, you have to love yourself. So, it's been a wonderful Valentine's and thank you, Arun, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you, Prakash. Thank you, Leaders Connect. Thank you, Aroki Raj. Uh, thank you, Divya. And thanks a lot. Thank you very much to you too, Rashmi, for being a part of all this. You've been a very lively participant and always been a you know, wonderful and add-on for us in our Membership Connect. Lovely. Thank you very much. So right now we're moving on to the next uh, part of the episode. Um, I call upon uh, Mr. Nellan Aigam, sir, to conduct a small quiz to all our members, considering the topics we have spoken and a lot of the things Arukya Raj had added on to the table today. So yes, sir, the mic is over to you. And he's a very proud member of our Leaders Connect. Um, before even I know what Leaders Connect, he's been a part of it. So it's nice to see you here today, today sir, in 2024. Yes, it's all you, sir. Now. Thank you. Um, good evening, all. Thanks for the visa training for this opportunity as a quiz leader. 
and uh, dear mr arake sir uh, really wonderful insights about the uh, mental wellness and i really impressed your uh, points on understanding the team strength and uh, engaging the the team on the ownership and uh, as well as the how the community is helping them and uh, the member how to utilize the member strength and uh, ensuring the welcome attitude and uh, even we have to rethink on when we are having this uh, new generations uh, on board uh, in the office environmental thank you sir and yes uh, let's see who's the lucky winner of this week quiz and so fastest fingers first let's see who writes the correct answer in the chat box i uh, i will post that the uh, question with the uh, choices just a minute Arakis sir uh, mentioned that the shield method, uh, the com comprehensive approach for the mental wellness for all the members. Yeah, I think the answers are coming up. Even uh, actually, we have also uh, should rethink because we are missing or we are not uh, consistent on this particular approach. Then we have to do that. I think uh, the correct answer is B, and uh, Dr. Vasanthi Jason mentioned the correct answer first. So. This week, uh, quiz winner is Dr. Vasanthi Jason. Congratulations, uh, Vasanthi, madam. It's been always the fastest fingers for you. I don't know how fast you were able to type. It's great. <laughs> However, yeah, I mean, it's it's lovely. Congratulations. The um, gift is in the order. I think Arun will keep in touch with you on that matter. Lovely, great question, Helen Agam, sir, because that's the most important highlight of the session today. Because uh, even I have noted out quickly, you know, took the notepad and started noting it out. You're very, very helpful. Lovely. Thank you very much for sharing that, uh, Arugirat, sir. And great questioning about that, uh, Nali Nayagam, sir. Lovely. So let's move on to the next part of the episode. Before that, I'd like to talk about the offline uh, meet we do every month, every couple of months in between, I believe. So we do rocket goals of, I also mentioned that to Mr. Arugiraj to be a part of that. We do this yes. offline connect uh, often uh, in Chennai and in Bangalore. So okay. it's it'll be lovely if you could join us uh, in this meet. Uh, all sure. the leaders join us for uh, different insights. We do panel discussion with the leaders. We would love to have you there, sir, if your dates are available on March 9th uh, okay. next month. So we will share the insights. And I also ask Arun to play the video. It will be helpful for you to understand better. Sure, I would love to really see Leaders Connect is very close to me and I must really thank Mr. Pakash and I came to know about him uh, a year before and uh, such a beautiful trainer uh, we came across in industry. So uh, anything for Mr. Pakash and of course, uh, Mr. Arul has been coordinating and I've, earlier I have attended a few uh, Leader Connect programs. So uh, very well organized and uh, it's beautiful to connect uh, with different uh, leaders across sectors. So. Uh, lovely organized and uh, thank you um, uh, madam reshmi so for your wonderful uh, being a co-part today to facilitate this need see at the end of the day everybody learns relearns and unlearn let us relearn something so that is beautiful to come across so i would love to join you in upcoming endeavors as well and thank you very much for this opportunity and to all the participants who are patiently listening to maybe i would love to listen and uh, you know learn uh, take away a few things from you as well Thank you, leaders. Thank you. Definitely, sir. Just be a part of this. It'll be lovely. And this invite is for everybody. Please don't misunderstand. It is only for Agyur Arugirat, sir. This invite is for everybody in and around in Chennai. Please do join us. You know how much fun and how much enjoyment and learning it will be. I believe this quote, which I recently learned, where there is fun, there is learning. So please come enjoy the fun as well as the learning part. So please do join us on March 9th. Uh, Arul might be sharing in your personal window. For all the details and the requirements. Lovely. Let's move on to our great proud members, Indil Kumar, sir, for the summary of uh, today. Uh, I, I love to see the summary in the PDF, sir, so I can share it with everybody as well. Uh, on top of it, please, sir, the mic is all on you. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Devia, to unmute me and giving me opportunity. You were uh, voice was really vibrating for uh, each of the members in today's forum. And thank you, Aro Raj, sir, for the wonderful session. We not only listened to your message with the patients, we invite the many sound in qualities what you have said today. So let me take this opportunity to summarize that uh, points. 
uh, we started with the how the orientation should be the objective for a employee to unleash into your common workplace understanding. Second is uh, how a battery engagement towards building organization culture plays an important role. Third is intrinsic motivation with the empathetic mindset uh, is crucial in an organization. Fourth is how people carry a stigma based on designation that need to be a change in each employee because each employee is interdependent in an organization to be more mindfulness. Next is uh, each person undergoes trauma which need to be accepted and dealt with the empathy. We, even within a family, when we deal with two different kids, we use an emotional strategy and approach. Seventh is, uh, as you saw, so you re this was one of the problems what you cited here, and how we need to embrace the setback and give them a space with respect. Next is the best example today is we need, we can learn from children of Gen Alpha who are more mature to embark in a school journey to respect and help each one of them with the empathy mindset. Next is the, the best way to bounce back from stress or adversity is focusing on yoga or meditation or many self care and mental wellness initiative. And next is uh, the 10th point is uh, as it came in today's quiz about the shield, which uh, everyone knows I don't need to <laughs> redo or repeat it again. Uh, yes for sleep, H for uh, handling emotion, I for interact, E for exercise, L for learning, D for life. Next is uh, each school is piloted with the Master Health and Wellness as a part of awareness program. In school, the result of this uh, well, mental well, uh, wellness reflect in terms of uh, result rating where it doesn't come with a ranking system it goes with the grading with the cautious of percentile system showing disparity may adverse the situation even in a workplace fourth yeah 14th point what you mentioned was about the control ownership reach out and endurance which plays a very crucial and triads in our mental well when coming to mental wellness next is every trauma have a preceding symptom of fear so next you gave a very good uh, equation about uh, endurance when uh, Divya asked about the endurance, you mentioned that perseverance plus consistency is equal to endur endurance, uh, which helps to bounce back in adversity or any vulnerability situation. The self-care is essential and need to be self-engaged with based on his passion activity so that it makes him more uh, uh, far, uh, better to overcome this uh, setback. And examples like uh, Surya Namaskar and Yoga helps them better. Last point, what you mentioned was about the gender bias and the DEI bias and serial thinking, which need to be narrowed down in today's uh, uh, today's world. Uh, apart from that, you gave some two, three tips about the self-care where the Japanese encourage employee by a Kaizen activity and recreation event have been uh, planned in many organizations in terms of self-care. And third is uh, uh, design thinking in terms of uh, mentally, uh, person can't be idle, so he need to incorporate the good values and ethics that he can invite from the ancestors within a, a nuclear family. These were some of the key takeaways from today's session. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Sendhil, sir, and that's why we call him a summary master, because he uh, doesn't leave a single point even if we discuss and have a conversation about, and that's Sendhil for you all today. <laughs> who joined us today lovely great so um i think we uh have to have an open question for all the members we had a couple of questions earlier as well from rajiv so i am uh deem to uh, give an opportunity to rajiv here he's available sir you had a couple of questions we were able to answer one during the session so if you want to add on to any question you can on top of it we'll give opportunity for a couple of other people and then we can uh, move on to the next part of the session. So, Rajiv, if you are here, I, you can unmute yourself. And, okay, I think he is not available. So, let's give it to all other members around uh, the Maybe session. let me, uh, yeah, maybe let me ask my uh, question in case if time permits. Uh, yeah. Uh, question, to, question here is uh, on the self-care topic. Uh, person who already broke down or uh, having a mentally challenged, how can he have a conscious or awareness, self-awareness in terms of uh, uh, self-care to overcome the situation? Or is there any possible opportunities for him? That's a very, very valid question, uh, sir. Like uh, when a person is really broke and uh, uh, identifying them, it's really crucial because they seldom they yeah. open that person and fight. 
but you know what uh, that's what where as a team we have to keep up the pace when we are completely engaged we don't uh, rule out anybody from a group for example so we know that who is out of uh, you know who is really pro and uh, as you all know that you know love and uh, generally when we when we talk about somebody who is already pro we we don't have to you know really advise them and tell them to come out of it the first thing is we have to listen to them and uh, make us understand what is the real situation and trauma that he is undergoing listening is a very best part the person once he confides i think he is already have come half of it so he he already had sailed through it but uh, naturally you know no wonders can be done in a day definitely with good interactions and uh, people will definitely long to you know stay on uh, somebody so they look for a good shoulder to you know share things that's uh, that's what uh, every uh, age factor whether uh, the relationship that we carry in a, in a office or in a workplace and a school education or in a family people always wanted someone to listen to so i think uh, by listening we can uh, you know bring the people out from this uh, real resilience thank you very much sir thank you very much for the greatly put sir i think listen is listening is one of the leadership quality which everybody should ascertain and that is most important for nowadays we talk about mental illness wellness and mental health and all that i think the base step is listening so that people will certainly have their own aspect of sharing things wonderfully said that so um we have opportunity for one more person to ask questions or if anybody have or want to use the opportunity can raise your hands we can unmute you okay i think we are all uh, sorted seems like arogya rat sir has given a wonderful light on all the insights we've spoken today so on that notes um we are coming almost at the end of the session now um so there are uh, whatsapp links and facebook links for our uh, upcoming episodes and there are live streaming also happening and we have shared linkedin profile of our panel discussion leader as well as our uh, uh, chief guest so please do uh, connect with them uh, this is the whole idea of this let leaders network connectivity uh, on top of this i'd really be happy to share the insights of all others also if you have any so i'll open the forum for all of you to share your insights in the network uh, panel when we do it before that i'd like to give you a thank of everything which you have uh, shared today mr arogya rao sir thanks for your uh, learnings thanks for your experience thanks for all your information and insights today it was very very helpful it was very useful for me as well in that aspect so i do uh, request arul to play a word of thanks video so that we can go ahead with the next part of the session Yes, we have come to the end of the episode today. So we're going to.